This is a normally closed pneumatic control valve. It consists of a nozzle tube, a valve nut, a valve body, and the actuator assembly. The valve body has three weep holes that indicate the problem. The top weep hole indicates we have a seal leakage. Water dripping out of here means the adapter is loose that goes in there or the collar on the threads of the tube is backed off uh, too far where it's not uh, making contact in there with the seat. The bottom one is a loose valve nut or a bad seat or a damage to the valve body. Water leakage out the nozzle tube when the valve is in the off position and you have high pressure water coming in means a needle and seat inside here are not mating up and we got something damaged with them so we'd have to replace it as a kit. First thing we're going to do is place it in a vise, remove the blue cover. We need to apply air pressure to the actuator to take the tension off the, the needle and seat inside it there. It takes about 75 to 85 pounds of air pressure to operate the valve. We're going to take an inch and a quarter, open and wrench, break the nut loose to take the tension off the uh, stem and the seat inside here. Remove the air pressure. We can go ahead and take our actuator, getting out of the actuator. Remove the valve nut and the nozzle tube. Sometimes the seat will come out on here, sometimes it stays up inside there. We can use a uh, strap wrench to break this loose. If it's too tight, sometimes it's, you can come loose by hand. Sometimes you have to use a strap wrench to break it loose. Remove the actuator. Take a pair of needle nose pliers. Pull the stem out. Sometimes the O-ring uh, comes off with it. Sometimes it stays in there. Remove the seat. Notice there's a little O-ring on the stem. The normally closed valve has the O-ring to seal up inside the actuator. The normally open valves, like on the dump valve, do not require the little O-ring. To remove the backup ring and the stainless steel backup ring, take your stem, put it in there and kind of pull them out. You notice the stainless steel one has a groove in it on one side. The brass one just has a step on one side. Now if the seat is still in there, which it is on this one, take the old stem, stick it back through the top, through the seal assembly, push the seat, it'll fall out, then you can remove the stem again. The seal is still in position, so we want to take the little push tool Push the seal out and remove it. Clean your body real well. Inspect the bore for scratches. Um, blow it out with air and always replace the parts as a kit. The kits come like this. It has everything in it except the stainless grooved ring. It's a non-wear item and you shouldn't have to replace it unless you lose it. Once we uh, get everything cleaned up, we have a, uh, a position tool that we will insert in the bottom. This prevents the seal from being pushed down too far. So use the valve nut, thread it back in there by hand, just hand tight.
The other tool we have is a seal installation tool. What we're going to do, we're going to place that down inside the, the body. If you notice, our seal has a little wedge ring on it and an O-ring. The wedge ring goes on the stem or on the seal um, facing up. We're going to put just a little bit of FML2 grease on the outside of the seal and position it in the tool with the wedge ring facing up. Use your little push tool to push it down and it should bottom out on the top of that positioning tool. Uh, on the new stem, we put the O-ring. Notice the position of the stainless backup ring with the groove going away from the O-ring. Then we have our little uh, brass backup ring with the step facing the brass backup ring on the brass wedge ring on the seal. Put a little grease on our stem and position it down inside the seal assembly. Push it down. Then we're going to use a little goop on the actuator. You want to thread it in. As we're threading that in, when it just starts to feel a little tension, you want to back the valve nut off that holds that position tool in there. Back it off till you know that's the bottom out. And give it a good flip with the wrist to tighten it. And then we'll remove the valve nut and the position tool. We're going to take our new seat, put a little goop on the outside of the seat. We're going to put it up inside the valve body. Then we're going to take our nozzle tube and our valve nut. Put a little goop on our threads and on the face of the valve nut. With the seat in place, push the nozzle tube and the valve nut in and start threading it in. Do it hand tight. Put it back in the vise and we'll put our air pressure. Once you apply your air pressure, you should be able to thread that in by hand farther. And with air pressure applied, we want to torque this to 50 foot pounds. Then you can take your air pressure off. After we get it all rebuilt, we'll put it back on the machine. If any water is dripping out the end of the stem, then you know that needle and seat is, is not in position, it's got damaged in there. Um, so we don't want no water dripping out there when the valve is in the off position with high pressure going into there.